So good morning, everyone, and it is just so good to see everyone here this morning. Welcome to Unity Las Cruces virtual Sunday celebration where God is good all the time and all are welcome, safe and loved. So my name is Helen Wright and I'm the Ministry Coordinator for Unity Las Cruces. And today we have a spiritual reading that was specially selected by our speaker. And it's so relevant to the theme that she'll be talking about. She's talking about courting the divine. And this piece is called Divine Courtship. It's from Father Pedro Agupe. Nothing is more practical than finding God. I'll start again. Nothing is more practical than finding God, than falling in love in a quiet, absolute, final way. What you are in love with, what seizes your imagination, will affect everything. It will decide what will get you out of bed in the morning and what you will do with your evenings, how you will spend your weekends, what you read, whom you know, what breaks your heart and what amazes you with joy and gratitude. Fall in love, stay in love, and it will, it will decide everything. So today's speaker will be Yvette Truyo, and she is a Science of Mind practitioner, and so we look forward to that talk. And today we have special music from Teresa Tudere, and we look forward to that. And Reverend Tanya will be leading our meditation. The good news, we're going to pause. We have plenty of good news, but we're going to pause that this week because um, we want to provide time for the talk and the meditation. So thank you for those who have submitted um, good news and we will be presenting that again next week. So please join us for a moment of gratitude. So for all of us, just appreciate each other, appreciate ourselves for being here, for showing up. And we appreciate and show our gratitude for everyone helps support Unity Las Cruces. And that's the prayer chaplaincy and social media outreach the Las Cruces Board, Unity Las Cruces Board, everyone, people who are praying, anonymous prayers, the musicians, the speakers, and the technology for being able to gather here today with this Zoom, our Zoom meeting. So thank you all for raising the vibration of Las Cruces, the planet Earth and the universe, and through our prayers and affirmations and visualizations, we do make a difference. So now let's just take a moment for, for prayer, for the opening prayer. We go within to that inner sanctuary. And we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for divine order made manifest in our lives. And as we go within, we may contemplate on all of our personal connections with the divine, with the God, the God of our understanding. And in that inner space, we may have words that speak to us, that help us make that connection with the divine. We may say spirit or Holy Spirit, divine love, divine spirit. We may use, the, use words of God is all, creator, Mother, Father, God, and just being in that and honoring our own unique and divine connection with the divine. We acknowledge our interconnectedness with all of life, with all of creation and with each other, and honor that connectedness with the divine that is always available to us any moment. All we need to do is just to go within and connect with that divine spirit within us. And for all of this divine connection, we are grateful. We give thanks, and so it is. So next, it's time for our daily word, and we welcome John Powers sharing the um, daily word of prosperity. It is for October 11th. 
I am prosperous as I enjoy my daily blessings. I am comfortable with the person I see in the mirror as I begin my day. I am filled with energy and enthusiasm for my work, my recreation, time with family or friends, or time for learning and reflection. My gratitude grows throughout the day as I take part in activities I enjoy and spend time with people I care about. As I prepare for sleep, I am grateful for the blessings of a day well lived. More than money or possessions, prosperity is an awareness of well being, my ability to enjoy simple blessings. I strengthen my prosperity consciousness as I bless and appreciate my home, my friends and family and my work. I increase the flow of abundance by sharing my time, talents and treasure in service to others. The scripture reading is Psalm 23, uh, verse six. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And the affirmation together is, I am prosperous as I enjoy my daily blessings. And so it is. And so it is. Thank you, John. Next, we have our foundation statement with Reverend Tanya. Our foundation statement. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, God, the good omnipotence. Thank you, Tanya. And now it's my great pleasure to in introduce our speaker for today. Yvette Trujillo is a passionate student of new thought principles and has been so for over 20 years. She's a religious science practitioner and an inspi inspirational speaker. She has opened conferences for global audiences of over 4,000 viewers and has been praised by world-renowned teacher and author, Father Richard Rohr, for her minister's heart and sincere message. Yvette's passion is to inspire healing through an awareness of our inherent sufficiency, mirrored in the nature, resulting in an acceptance and embrace of our whole selves. So the title of her talk is Courting the Divine. Please welcome Yvette. Thank you so much for that introduction. It is absolutely a pleasure to be here. And I actually want to share that I am originally from down this way. I grew up on a small pecan orchard in the little farming community of La Union, just south of here, and I went to New Mexico State University. So when I make the drive from La, uh, Albuquerque down here to Las Cruces, I'm coming home. So thank you so much for the invitation. So this month here in Las Cruces, we're talking about cosmic connections. And today what I want to share with you is this idea of courting the divine. And that is strengthening our experience of those connections to the cosmos. So just kind of fundamentally to set some groundwork, cosmic connections, in my understanding, are the connections that we have to the whole, to everything, to the universe, to the divine. And because we know that God is all there is, and everything in existence falls within that divine mind of spirit, of God, of the universe, then we know also that our connections to the cosmos are our connections to each other and to the world that we see around us and the material world, the nature that we have the pleasure of experiencing as well as our connection to spirit. And when we feel and experience that cosmic connection, we know our oneness, oneness to the people and things around us and our oneness with God. So that when we do the work 
of deepening our connections, of creating new connections, and of maybe even restoring connections that appear to be broken, that ultimately what we're doing is we're experiencing our deeper connection to ourselves. And the beauty of all of this is that unity, oneness, connection is at the core of who we are. It's at the core of our teachings in Science of Mind. In fact, it is the very first of our 10 core concepts in the Science of Mind, oneness. God is the source of all that is, and God is all that is. Everything in the universe is made of the God substance and is a unique, individualized expression of God. So we're not having a brand new conversation here, right? We're talking about the foundations of what we believe. And we can look to our tradition, of course, at the core of it to affirm that truth. But we can also look to science. Science is telling us now that not only are we connected, but it's actually a human need. We evolved to where we are today from becoming social beings. We found that by connecting to one another and cooperating with one another, we had a greater chance of survival. And so as we moved along through time and more and more deepened into that truth and the realization that by connecting, by depending on one another, we would actually live, that became a part of who we are. Now, today, it certainly doesn't look like we need each other in the same ways that we did way back when, as we were developing this in ourselves. We have all of the modern conveniences that make it appear that we can operate independently without needing another person. Well, that's not quite true. We don't exactly have to interact with one another in person and look at each other in the eyes in order to get our needs met. But we're interconnected with one another, whether we see each other or not. And there still lies within us that pull, that call to connect. And so it may not seem like we need each other for physical survival, but we certainly do need connection for our psychological well-being. And absolutely, we need to be connected in order to thrive spiritually. Not only our evolution, but Quantum physics is telling us, we love quantum physics, right? It comes up often. Well, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he is a famous astrophysicist, and he says quite poetically, he breaks it down for us. Not only do we live among the stars, the stars live within us. The atoms of our bodies are traceable to stars that manufactured them in their cores and exploded these enriched ingredients across the galaxy billions of years ago. For this reason, we are biologically connected to every other living thing in the world. We are chemically connected to all molecules on Earth. And we are atomically connected to all atoms in the universe. <laughs> We're connected. We're connected to everything. The great news is that we've never been separated. And we feel that pull to one another. So we know this, right? I keep talking about it. We know it as students of new thought. We believe this, and even if you don't believe in God, now we have science to tell us and to confirm what the mystics have been telling us for millennia. I think that if we were still able to sit in a room together, I could look out across the audience and see heads nodding in agreement. We know this. So why do we feel so alone?
There was a nationwide survey that was taken in 2018. They questioned 200,000, over 200,000 people, ages 18 and older. And what they found was nearly half reported feeling lonely. And a great portion of those reported feeling lonely a lot of the time. Half. Why is it then that we feel so alone when science and religion tells us that we're intimately connected and infinitely connected. We're atomically connected to all atoms in the universe, and yet we feel intense loneliness in this expression of human being on this planet, half of us. The indigenous Sioux people have a saying the longest journey you will make in your life is from your head to your heart. So how can this truth of our cosmic connection transcend our intellect and take that journey and nestle into the knowing of our hearts? Well, I think one thing that we need to do is take a look at the full picture. When we're sitting in rooms like this, and we're all having a conversation about our oneness and our connection, or we're, we're in a class, or we're reading something that is affirming our connection, it is absolutely the easiest thing to know and recognize, yes, I can feel it, and I can see the God in you, right? Imagine, imagine yourself for a minute. Just, if you can, if it's safe, to close your eyes and imagine yourself sitting in the most beautiful, natural environment. For you, it might be the beach and you can hear the water lapping on the sand. Or maybe you're up in the mountains and you're looking out at pine trees and a beautiful sky, feeling the ground beneath your feet and the sun on your skin. In that imagining and in that moment, I know that I, when I have that practice, can feel my connection, my absolute connection to God. Now I'd like you to imagine yourself in front of a newspaper or a computer or a television screen watching the news. Feel it. Imagine it and notice the difference. What's happening? What's happening to create that shift? What I believe is happening is that we're most likely in an experience and an engagement of judgment. And when I say judgment, I want to make a distinction between judgment and discernment. Judgment needlessly curtails our unlimited resources, right? Love, kindness, compassion. And an example is, that woman is annoying. I can't stand being around her. Mm, her laugh irritates me. She's so scatterbrained. I don't know how she gets anything done. That's judgment. Discernment is allocating our resources, time, money, energy. An example is, I'm going to have dinner with my new friend instead of going to the party because I want to invest in deepening in my connection to them and see how I can help with their new company. That's discernment. I'm talking about judgment, not discernment. And when I say that, I'm also not doubting our belief in connection, right? That we 
also have at times a belief in our separation does not negate our belief in our connection, in our unity. Both can exist. Our precious little human selves are so complex and wonderful. We can hold both of those ideas. Ernest Holmes, the founder of Science of Mind, in his book on page 128 says, if we think of ourselves as being separated from the universe, we shall be limited by this thought, for it is a belief in separation from God that binds and limits us. And again, this isn't about judgment. It's just what is. So we're holding both the belief in our cosmic connection and the belief in our separation. And we experience that separation from our judgment. So my question is, which one of these is winning? And this reminds me of a Native American parable that I've heard many times, so many of you may have heard it as well. It's the story of two wolves. An old Cherokee is teaching his grandson about life. And he says, a fight is going on inside me, he says to the boy. It's a terrible fight, and it's between two wolves. One is evil, anger, envy, sorrow, regret, greed. He continued, the other is joy. Peace, love, and hope. And the same fight is going on inside of you, inside of every person. The grandson thought about it for a minute and then asked his grandfather, which wolf will win? The old Cherokee simply replied, the one you feed. How do we grow and strengthen our belief and our experience of our cosmic connections? We feed it. We increase and deepen our experience of those connections. We double down. Right now, we are in a time of seeming duality, right? The good, the bad, he's wrong, she's wrong, they're with us, they're with them. So at this time in particular, it's so important that we nurture this experience. I oftentimes have a little bit of a challenge motivating myself when what I have to do doesn't feel so fun. And so I have little tricks to try and make it more enjoyable. And the reason I mention that is because when I think of connections of any kind, as an introvert, it feels a little bit scary and a little bit challenging. So any way that I can zhuzh it up and make it feel enticing is a win for me. So I'm going to share the process that I've gone through in order to deepen and strengthen my experience of my cosmic connections, which of course are all of your cosmic connections. So right now we're going to start talking about courting the divine. So my invitation, if you take this on, is to go back in time. Go back to a time, and for some of us it may be way back, when falling in love was electric. When your heart felt like it would explode if they just looked your way and you were walking on air. Now, if you can't go back that far, or if you just can't get over thinking, bah humbug, love, I get it. Just imagine your favorite rom-com, or if you hate rom-coms, one that somebody made you watch. These early experiences that we have are really wonderful examples of how we can engage with our experiences of connection. So again, this is a game we're playing. 
Suspend the reality of courting related to broken hearts and unrequited love. This is just about the courting. In the process of courting and falling in love, we don't just sit there, right? We don't just wait to see what happens. In those early stages of falling in love, we are chasing love down. We notice and are curious about every little thing, all the details of our object of affection, everything they do, everything they say, the way that they look. And we're inspired or even driven to know more. They, the object of our pursuits, even seem to transform right before our eyes. All blemishes and shortcomings fall away. They're so funny and really interesting. And they just seem to have that special something. And we may have even asked ourselves, wow, how didn't I notice that before? It's kind of funny, this transformation really happens because if you've ever looked back at an old yearbook and run across some of those folks, you're like, oh, oh I don't quite remember them that way. When we are courting and when we are falling in love, the object of our affection transforms before our eyes. And when we're courting, we also give them our focused attention. We gussy up. We absolutely make time in our busy schedules for them. We step out beyond what would be our comfort zone. And we are present in their presence. Nothing else matters. They are our singular focus. So this game is to approach the work, and it is some work, of connecting, of knowing our unity, the way that we would if we were the younger versions of ourselves courting a love interest. And as we do that, we're going to notice and be curious. We're going to transform our perspective, and we're going to give our focused attention. So notice and be curious. The invitation here is to catch yourself when you're having a charged and what some might call negative feeling, anger, frustration. For example, you walk outside one morning and you notice that there's a crack in your windshield that you hadn't seen there before. Ugh. Can't believe it. Use that as a bell to catch your attention and pause. Now, I'm not asking you to suppress the feeling or to judge it. My invitation is just to notice it and to be really curious. Oh, yeah, I just got really mad. Yep, there's a crack in the windshield and I'm really mad. And if I think about it, actually, I'm feeling a little scared because I don't know if my insurance covers that service. And I don't know if I have enough money in the bank account. So just be curious. Don't judge it. Don't stop it. A question that I ask that has been really helpful for me in this practice is, hmm, isn't that interesting? Look at that. I'm mad. Yeah. It's actually quick and pretty easy once you start going with it to catch it and you use those feelings as the little bell to call your attention, to pause, to look, to notice, and to be curious. Transforming your perspective. This is kind of a little bit more challenging for folks, and so I'm going to invite you to, to do this with something easy. 
take an object, perhaps that windshield, that's bringing about, eliciting that feeling of anger or fear, judgment, it's wrong, I shouldn't have a cracked windshield. Maybe it's someone who cut you off in traffic or you burned a tortilla, whatever, it really doesn't matter, but that sense, that experience, and notice it. And then transform it, just like you would if you were falling in love. And again, it's not because we're transforming it that it's because it's wrong, but we're transforming it in order to remember that God is all and everything there is. That everything is made of God's substance and is unique and is an individualized expression of God. Everything, right? That's what we believe, everything. And try to imagine how this is true in this situation. It can be difficult. I often find it helpful to look beyond the experience, broken or cracked windshield. This stinks. But you know what? Someone's job is fixing my cracked windshield. This is their livelihood. And I don't know how to fill that crack with that goo stuff. I don't have the ability. So I'm going to allow myself to be cared for by the universe in the form of this person. Right in this moment, when you feel that experience and you've taken a look at it and you've just observed it, work to remember that that too is a part of the divine and that it is cosmically connected to everything as well as you. In our heads, we know that we're connected. We believe it. So let's pull all we've got for this one. This is a hard time. So anything that we can do in the coming months to remember the truth of who we are, to remember our connection to one another, and ultimately to the divine, is the work of remembering that God is right here and right now, no matter what appearances may say. And now our focused attention. So we're going to shift this exercise a bit, and now we're going to talk about mindfulness. Courting the divine through mindfulness, your focused attention on experiences in nature and the world around you. If you can give your attention to looking at an experience, to being with an experience, and knowing that in that moment you are connected to the divine, you will deepen and strengthen your connection in all other circumstances. It will become easier. Going on a hike and really paying attention to the world around you. Paying attention to the time and taking in the beautiful sunsets that we have here in New Mexico. I've had a new practice of doing meditation with my wife and it's glorious. It's so much fun. And the other day she said, well, do you want to let the babies in? We have two chihuahuas, an old man and a brand new little baby girl. She's only a year old. And I thought, oh, Pinon would be great. He's just going to lay there. Willow, I don't know. It was the most amazing experience. They both wanted to sit with me. And I held Pinon like a baby on his back and Willow over here on my right side. And I closed my eyes. And then I was inspired to open them and look down at Pinon. And he was looking at me with the most love I had ever seen focused in my direction, truly. And I looked down at him and felt the exact same way. I didn't close my eyes for the rest of the meditation. I just sat there and was present with my sweet little dog. And I absolutely, in that moment, knew my connection. Take time to focus on the beautiful experiences of nature around you. 
take time to really be with the people that you love, that you already have connections to. Be mindful when you're with them. Look at them in their eyes. Really listen to what they're saying. Be curious and ask questions. Ask if there's anything that you can do to help them. Strengthening our existing connections and relationships to people also deepens our realization of our cosmic connection. Be creative. This is the tough one for the introverts, maybe. Find ways, even now in the pandemic, of connecting with new people. Get a pen pal. I just did it, it's really fantastic. I've never done that before. Or join one of the online groups. But do so and be present mindfully. Court the divine within the individuals that you're sharing that space with. Court the divine with your focused attention. Like this is your new and exciting love interest. We have some work to do, not because we're wrong, but because we want to feel and know better. Treat everything that you engage with, with that excitement, like you're looking into the eyes of the divine, because you are. And please join me in prayer. I know that there is one power and one presence. That divine, electric, joy-filled movement of spirit that is everywhere, all the time. Omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. That the divine source of life is flowing through, in, and as everything that I can lay my eyes upon. And everything that I can't see. I know that that spirit, that energy, that vibration of God flows all around me. It is detectable when I pay attention. I know this to be true. And as I know that everything in existence is absolutely living and breathing and having its way within this mind of God, I know that I too I'm united with that magnificent, beautiful expression. I am its creation. I am its expression. And knowing this to be true, I absolutely know that as each and every person who can hear my voice walks through the next few months of this year, through all that we have unfolding in our country and in our world, I absolutely know that there is a strengthening, a deepening an electric vibration of connection, deepening and strengthening with each, within each and every one of us so that we can face the things that appear to be real in the world with more ease, that we can look across the aisle at one another and see the eyes of the divine looking back at us. That we can have a transformed experience of these times. I know that this is the unfolding for every person who can hear my voice. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to remember who and whose we are. I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be here and to recognize that truth within each and every one of us. And so I joyfully surrender my word into the law, knowing that it is done now. 
that the truth is not being formed, it is being revealed now. We are infinitely connected. We are one. Thank you, God. And so it is. Thank you, Yvette, for those inspiring words and the invitation to, to court God, to court the divine. And next, um, we have a wonderful experience of meditation as Reverend Tanya leads us to a meditation. Thank you, Helen. Thank you very much. Let's all get comfortable and relax. Taking a deep breath. Hmm. Relax. Recognize. Let go. Relax. Re recognize and let go of all that which may stand in the way, which blocks our connections with that divine, beloved, our higher power, our God, our universe, whatever method or name that we use, we let go of those things standing between that keep us from connecting. Breathe in, relax, and let go. At your feet, notice the path in front of you and allow yourself to move and walk forward to that favorite place, that place that you so much love, where you can relax and just really relax with no concerns or worries and allow all concerns and all worries and all discord and disharmony to fall away. Just relax. It might be in a beautiful pond, submerged or, or on a bench somewhere, surrounded at the beach, in your personal sanctuary where we allow the divine loving healing energy to surround us, to infill us. And we allow this beautiful loving healing energy to move through within and throughout us. We can feel it now in our feet, relaxing every muscle healing, every cell, everything is included. Relax and let go and know this foundation of our beings allows us to feel the healing and shed all misunderstandings so that we may move forward light of feet and sure of footing. And as we allow this beautiful, loving, healing energy to move into our ankles, we recognize the, the beautiful ease with which we relax and let go. And we recognize the flexibility that takes place, that our flexibility waiting there so that we may move easily. And as this energy moves up our calves, we relax and let this energy take its place, this healing energy to do its work and into our knees. Again, we feel this flexibility and strength as we move into our thighs and our hips and the base of our spine. Beautiful healing energy as we relax and let go. Nothing stands between us and this healing, loving, energy from our beloved. And as we bring the energy up our spine, the energy moves and the healing moves through our, our organs and our, our abdomen all the way up 
through each power center, through each chakra, through each sephira, moving up our spine and through our abdomen and settling here in our heart where we can feel this beautiful love and healing from our beloved. We let go of all past hurts. And as we let go, we feel the healing. We feel the healing here. And as we allow this energy to just expand into us, move throughout us, our entire being, and we allow it and share it into our throat, knowing that as we speak, we speak with love and kindness. And we speak with certainty and with wisdom. And the energy now is moving into our shoulders where we can feel this flexibility again, so flexible and strong. And we know that the responsibilities that we do with love and discernment and kindness, and we allow others in our lives to do their responsibilities. And, they, and we know that they too are carrying them out right and proper for all concerned for only the highest and best. And we feel this wonderful healing energy as it moves down our arms, healing all of us into our elbows and into our, down our arms, into our wrists and our hands. We feel this energy grow here between our hands like a ball of golden light. And as we open our hands, this energy expands through us and into our jaws and around our necks, re relaxing us and healing into our ears and the muscles of our face and our head. Everywhere, our eyes into our brain and around our scalp and up through our crown. Now we feel this healing, loving energy of God, our beloved, our divine our cosmic connection, this energy that is not a separate being, but within us. And we have allowed this energy to grow and the healing to take place from the tips of our toes to the top of our head and beyond. And as we feel this connection growing, we know that we too are connected with our loved ones, family and friends. And as this energy moves around the room that we're in and beyond the physical structure of the building, out into our city, our state, our borders, our country, around the globe, we feel a connective peace, a connective healing and a connective love. We see this healing take place as a whole and individually, each and every place. And we allow the healing to take place now in our past, our present, and our future going forward. And we take this energy with us as we move forward in our weeks ahead. With each step we take, we know only the highest and best is manifest in our lives and being. <sighs> Wherever we are now, we can stand and feel the strength of this love coursing through our being and see where we are in our path, see where our feet are on our path, and move back, move back to this place where we are now, easily feeling our feet and our hands, taking a breath and knowing that as we move forward in our week, in the days ahead, we are breathing this in with every breath and sharing this with every connection that we make with another. 
Now become more aware of your hands and feet and where you are right now and come back and be here now. Taking a deep breath and open your eyes. So it is, amen. Thank you, Tanya, that was beautiful. And now we have a, a special treat. Our music today is Teresa Tudori and with her own musical creation um, entitled Mestia Valley. Hi there, it is I, Teresa Tudori, and I'm really pleased and happy to be back with you this Sunday. Um, thank you for asking me. I um, was thinking about the, the content of the talk for this morning, for Sunday, and I thought this song might be in keeping with the spirit and the feeling of um, this morning's talk. So it's called the Messiah Valley, and I wrote it uh, when I first moved here last year. Uh, I wrote it uh, after an encounter down at the Rio Grande, and uh, experiencing the atmosphere of the mountains here, and the and the river, and it just came out in this song. Desert sweet night The mountains stand there in cool moonlight I can feel God's hand Still the Rio Grande as it rolls on by As it rolls on by all my heart belongs to thee Though it's rugged and worn as it can be I know it's not a lie But it's what I've got to offer thee Oh, <laughs> 
you. And thank you, Teresa. Beautiful. And now our prayer for faith. Welcome to Unity of Las Cruces, where we know that God is good all the time. Please join me in prayer as we affirm our prayer of faith. God is my help in every need. God does my every hunger feed. God dwells within me, guides my way through every moment, night and day. I now am wise, I now am true patient, kind, and loving too. All things I am can do and be through Christ, the truth that is in me. God is my health, I can't be sick. God is my strength, unfailing quick. God is my all, I know no fear, since God and love and truth are here. Amen. Today, uh, this week, our tithe recipient, recipient for this week is CSL, the Centre for Spiritual Living. And um, our love, our tithe goes out and creates more ripples of abundance and prosperity in the community. Thank you. Welcome to Unity of Las Cruces, where we know that God is good all the time. Your love blessings can be made at the Unity of Las Cruces website or on the weekly email. You can mail your gift, donation, or tithe to the P.O. Box. Your gift is given in love, goes out to the others in love, and love returns tenfold. And so it is. And in addition to those methods, um, I know some people are taking advantage of this. You could share your tithe by posting it through what I call the, the letterbox or the slot on the, the back door to the CSL. Thank you. So our speakers in October, um, coming up next week is myself and then rounding out the month will be Reverend Angela from the United Chapel Fellowship. The Daily Word continues on Wednesdays and uh, welcome everyone, welcome the Word on Wednesday. So last, last week we had a little bit of a difficulty because Zoom keeps upgrading its system, but um, I believe that all will be well and everyone, almost everyone was able to get onto the call last week. So we welcome you this coming Wednesday. We're still looking for donations of school supplies and also for volunteers to help collect those su supplies between 10 and 11 on Fridays um, at the back of the CSL. People can just drive by and you'll be met and your donations will be gratefully received and collected inside the building. Thank you. Hats, hats, hats. So next week, many hats. We invite you to wear a hat. The title of the talk will be The Many Hats of God. And we can reflect that divinity with the many hats of all of all of us joining in community. And then I have one more um, announcement in that um, that time change is coming up. So November first is our time change again, and it's fall, so we all fall back an hour, and that's coming up on November first. And I'm sure we'll be reminding everyone, including myself. Um, in the newsletter, the, the weekly email. So thank you all for joining this week and thank you especially to our musician, Teresa, and uh, to Derry and to our speaker, um, Yvette Trujillo and with Reverend Tanya doing the meditation. Thank you all for being here and sharing in this celebration this Sunday. And continue through the week, we don't have to um, be alone. We can reach out. We can make those cosmic connections with each other and continue to do that so as we feel connected. Thank you again for attending this Sunday service and you're welcome to stay after the service to catch up. And we're going to do the prayer for protection and the peace song 
and we're all going to be muted so you can go ahead and sing along or share the words of the prayer in your own homes. Thank you. One quick thing I wanted to throw out there, Tanya reminded me that today is Clergy Appreciation Day. I just want to let you know that today, this Sunday, is Clergy <laughs> Appreciation Day. So thank you to both you and Tanya for everything you're doing. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you. All right. And here goes the prayer for protection, everybody. Please join us as we affirm the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. Amen. it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be, with God as creator, family all are we. Let us walk with each other, each other in perfect harmony. Begin with me, let this be the moment now. Moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let. Thank you, everyone. Be well, be safe, have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Helen. Thank, Thank you, Tanya. You. Thank you, everyone. Thanks.